Hello and welcome to Patch 64. What a disaster <laughs> it's been. Uh, let's let's talk about internet um, providers and Superloop in particular. Um, they're That's not, not. It is. Let's, not, used... let's talk about, Dion, the fact that this is our wet dream. It's you and I, yep. no Josh. Yeah, it's welcome perfect. Welcome to Patchwork the way it was meant to be. Yeah, this is like, this is smooth sailing. We can talk about anything. We, we're not going to be lambasted for our opinions on things. It's going to be beautiful. We're, we'll, we will get going in a few minutes. We're just waiting for, uh, so Josh is wearing um, Bond's underwear <laughs> at the moment. Can everyone see Josh? No, you can see only just the corner. If you look in the bottom left corner, you can see uh, Josh's denim pants. Yeah. I think they're pretty iconic, Josh, to be honest. Uh, they're a light denim wash. I don't think <laughs> – I can't – if I visualize Josh, I'm never – I don't think I can see a different color of <laughs> denim other than a light denim. <laughs> so right now, if you just join us, we're having internet issues and Josh is not fiddling at the back of his computer like in, in a frozen state. I think he's just unplugged his ethernet. We're going to try with a with, uh, personal hotspot. Christian, what are you drinking? Oh, my God. This, this little yeah. guy. This is a digestivo that I've made for myself. I had a, um, a, a buster for dinner, so nice little digestivo to, to wash it all down. So is, is that name that you just said, is that the on the bottle or is that a category no, so, of liqueur? So, yeah, it is. It's an Amaro Montenegro is what sorry? I'm drinking. That's the liqueur. I'm sorry. It's delicious. Um, it's delicious. You introduced me to it. We had it at an Italian restaurant once. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the whole Montenegro thing, being an Italian drink, that makes no sense because it's its own country and it always should be. Do they have uh, maybe a drink called the... The Sicily. The, the Sicily. No, no, they don't have that. That's not a drink, unfortunately. <laughs> um, 
Uh, Dion, I, I wanted, I don't know why I felt like this would be the right platform, but considering we haven't actually started the episode proper yet, yep. we're just having a bit of, this is what, this is what's known as uh, banter or yeah. pre-chat. Yeah, it's bands. It's bands. <laughs> uh, someone at work tried to uh, actually enter. Bands. Yeah, it's tried to enter um, uh, a Google Calendar thing where we would chat, um, and she tried to uh, call it bands, like Dion and Lana bands. I was like, no, uh, no, just here he is. He's back on. No, oh, he's, he's very not. unbelievable. Hey. He's very. I upset. might drop out again. I'm sorry, guys. That's all right. Well, we're, Josh, you know we're live now. I don't know if you if you're aware of that. But we're actually live on 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 YouTube. So yeah, this has been yeah. This- <laughs> This is like, as well, our internet never fails at our house. And of course, as soon as we go to go live at eight o'clock, it, it ducks out. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Um, all right. Well, I think we're all settled. I think we're all settled now. And I think we're probably rearing to go. We've got some good chat now. We're, we're, the chat is, we're going to keep our eye on it through the episode. But this is more like you listeners peeking through the window. And I don't know what sort of window you were thinking there, whether it was a square window. I was thinking like a, a circular window on a ship. Um, I don't know what kind of bushes <laughs> the listeners are hiding in. <laughs> binoculars. Um, oh, no, but, yeah. I'm imagining the listeners with a newspaper with eye holes cut out. <laughs> <laughs> and we're sitting somewhere at a cafe just having a chat. And they're there listening through their newspaper. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I reckon I reckon we should get going with this. We're, we're very apologetic. We're, we're 13 minutes late. But we, we promise we'll make it up to you. And to be honest, you know, most of you, you're getting this for free, aren't you? Most of you aren't patrons. You're getting this for free. So if you want to arc up, go to www.patreon.com forward slash talking to Patrick. Um, but I reckon we get going with the show. What do you reckon, guys? Let's yep. do it. I'm Stop rearing to go. Rearing. <laughs> I'm waiting. No, I can't hear the music. So that, that's all right. These things these things happen. We're hoping that we can retain some of you uh, <laughs> here. If not, these will be podcasted as they usual. It's acapella. Acapella intro. Go for it. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> 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 We're just trying to get the music working. It's so oh, come so on, that, Dino, jump I in, do it. Nope, that's that's not that. So we've got a bone to pick that just played. Apparently, apparently the YouTube YouTube people can hear the music. We can't, so Dino, we might go have for to it. Do... just go your intro, in. mate. Crack in, Dion. When you're carrying shopping in from the car, should you place it at the door or take it all the way to the kitchen? If questions like this have crossed your mind, then you're in good company. Today we'll be taking a closer look at some of the daily habits and social conventions that make up the monotony of life. Let's consistently forget to put our sunglasses in a case until they drop and break. Grab your knitting needles on a blanket because it's time for three old friends to sit around and sew a new patch into their quilt of friendship. So join me, Dion, in my bedroom with Christian. Welcome to Patchwork. And Josh. Welcome to Patchwork. Now, as a lot of you might know, this patch is a little bit different because you're actually hearing a live recording from YouTube. Yes, you can come see us record our podcast at 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. It's always very important to say that every second Thursday. The next live stream will be on the 14th of May. Um, Now, we'll be releasing these episodes as normal in your podcast app every Wednesday fortnight. So we imagine most of you will be listening there now. But if you do want to see us recording our episodes you can head over to youtube.com forward slash welcome to patchwork josh that's right now before we get started i just wanted to uh have a quick chat about something that happened to me uh on friday i hosted my uh birthday zoom dance party and i wanted to just give a quick little insight into what it's like (laughs) we did that um what it's like to host a party in the the new normal um Mm. so i it was really nice because it ended up being this it was a much more selfish experience, which I really liked. I was not worried about other people having a good time. I was like, well, the people I'm going to have fun with the people in my house, and people can tune in, drop out if they want, whatever. Don't care. Josh, do you want to ask the people that were at the party whether they had a good time? <laughs> oh, I'm actually not that interested. I, I'm, I'm kind of fascinated. <laughs> I'm kind of fascinated to know if they did enjoy themselves. But for me, it was like the perfect thing if I played the music that I wanted to listen to, that I cared about, had a dance in my house with my with my housemates. Um, and so it was this really interesting dynamic where the setup though was very, very similar, rushing around, getting everything set up, like worried about all this kind of stuff. And then like that feeling of, but no one's coming over. Yeah. But that's the great thing, right? When we were setting up, we set up a single room. All the focus was in one room and you don't have to worry about a messy house afterwards. You don't have to worry about a messy room. It's just the one. 
And that's the dream. That's what you want to do. You wanted to set up the one room. But Josh, when I so it, the party, I think started about eight o'clock. I got there a little bit late, so I got there about eight forty-five. <laughs> I just want to make sure that there were other people there. But I was really apprehensive about it because I was like. You know, should I turn my camera on? Should I turn my mic off? You know, all this kind of stuff. Should I take my top off? <laughs> should I take my top off? What should I do? But it was for me, it was actually the first couple of minutes were a little bit, a little bit anxiety provoking, but mm. then it was amazing because you've got, you had 30 people on the screen in a Zoom call and they were like, some were looking over, one was cooking lasagna. Yeah. Um, it was amazing. Yeah. So for me, it was honestly one of the best parties I've ever been to. <laughs> See, okay, so right. I I had a similar kind of positive sentiment towards it, but mm. something that I felt that was really strange and, and somewhat disconcerting is when you're in the mood and having a bit of a dance and you can see everyone dancing, what was off? What was slightly off about a Zoom birthday party, Josh, was being able to see people who weren't having a dance, who were just <laughs> yes. looking and yes. watching with the lights on. I've yeah. never been to a nightclub where there's yeah. like a glass pl a glass pane of people watching in on the I've dance got, floor. I've got the solution. The solution is if you're dancing, cams on. If you're not dancing, get the fuck out of there. We don't want to see you. We don't want to see you having a shit time. In a club, if you don't want to dance, you're off to the side on your phone texting and doing – You get out. Get off the dance floor. The Zoom webcams is the dance floor. But that's that the thing. Those, but, but that's the thing. Those people exist in a nightclub as well. The people not having mm. a great time, the people taking a break. The issue is that the lights are normally turned down on them, right? Yeah. Because it's a nightclub. We don't have control of the lighting. So mm -hmm. seeing a well-lit person just looking straight down the barrel of the camera, very disconcerting. Yeah, yeah. It was. But, but it, I, still, I still had a great night, and uh, it certainly was a lot of fun. Yes, it was beautiful. All right, so this is really funny. Like, I think it was a couple of months ago, uh, Josh and I were sort of thinking, I think we were talking about taking shopping in from the car or we were doing it together or something like that. But we had this meeting of the minds and it was this really <laughs> odd moment. And I realized that every time if I go to the supermarket, come back in the car and I take shopping bags in, I am very, very conscious of making it as efficient as possible. So basically doing the least amount of meters that I can do. And this has become, and this is something that's become really, really kind of entrenched in the way that I do things. But it, I mentioned it and it suddenly dawned on me, are people thinking about the efficiency in like in this way? So like when you get the shopping from the car, are you dropping it at the door? Are you going back and then dropping the rest of the shopping at the door? Or are you going straight to the kitchen? Dropping it at the door? So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Setting up base camp in Everest. <laughs> <laughs> no, but why? Like, for me, what I do is I take it straight into the kitchen, but I oh. still haven't down the math, done the mathematical calculations, which is what happens if it's 10 meters to the kitchen? So I have to go 10 meters there, 10 meters back. Or like, is it exact? Am I but being surely, an idiot? Is it exactly the same? No. Well, it depends on the load as well, right? Yeah. Like, and the, the effort required to pick up mm. the bags and that, because I don't know about you, Dion, but when I'm say, and I'd, I'd like to know where you guys put your shopping bags, are you boot or back seat? Uh, uh, I'm a mixture. Well, honestly, wherever <laughs> I can find room in the car, that's where yeah. it is. Cause my Next car's a dead mess. <laughs> <I'm> a, <come> <laughs> <laughs> my you, car's Christian? such a mess, but yeah, Christian, uh, what about you? Um, I'm always putting shopping in the back seat. I feel like the back seat was naturally mm -hmm. made to prop something upright, whereas whereas the boot is kind of made for bowling balls and petrol cans <laughs> and kind of like rolled up picnic rugs. It's designed to have things rolling on it as opposed to the nice. back seat. Safety, if you've got if first. you've got a full if you've got a full load of shopping, right? Yeah. You can really pack that boot in nice and tight. Yep. And the thing that I'm doing when I'm unpacking, I'm mentally I'm doing a mental audit of what bags are in the boot and how many handfuls oh, that's going to be. And so we've got a light one here. That's going to go with a heavy one. That's probably enough for my left hand. Right hand, we can do two heavies because I'm right-handed. So they're <laughs> going to go. And then after that, we've got another four bags. So I'm I'm silently doing all those calculations before I, I grab my load because I don't want to get left with when I come back to the car and there's like one bag left because that's wasted opportunity. Okay, here's a question for you. What food, if you are putting your food in the back part of the car, so not not the back seat, but where your feet go, where the passenger feet, feet go, what, 
with the footwell, perfect. What are what is the perfect food, a perfect items to put there? Oh, How, where, are you, oh. where are you putting your bottles? Where are you putting your soda waters, Christian? You're buying ten, ten so, of them every soda time. Soda water, and you've got, and you've also got tinned goods. Cans, tinned goods. Cans, that's maybe. where they belong in the mm. footwell. Yeah, that's yeah, why you yeah. have to put them in the car. It, it's like you can't have things in the you can't have things in the shopping in in the boot because. It's kind of like you, you get to open the side door. It's way more convenient. Well, for mm. me, you're treating, way you're, more tr- you're treating your groceries like a VIP coming to a hotel. All right, this way, groceries. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask, though, sorry, just a quick quick diversion because I really want to get back on this efficiency stuff. Christian, when you're buying tins, if you had an ideal situation, mm. would they be uh, ring ring t- ring tins? <laughs> what are they called? Ringtail. Ring-tail, ring-tail, ring-tail tin possums. Yeah. <laughs> Um, are they rings or are they, or does it require a can opener? I don't understand why all tins aren't rings. <laughs> who, who in their right mind is going shocking, shocking, got a ring on it. <laughs> why the non ring? Surely that's a cost. That's a cost yeah. saving measure I, for I, the business. I'm definitely right? sure we've discussed this before and we I decided it we was have. cost without asking anyone. <laughs> <laughs> it just it just dawned on me. All right, so going back to this efficiency, Christian, are you thinking constantly throughout your life? Like, here's yeah. another example. Here's a perfect example. All right, I sometimes need to go downstairs because <laughs> um, I live on the first floor of my apartment, and I will try and do everything I can in that one trip. Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of like load me up, <laughs> normal rubbish, recycling, green rubbish, maybe pump up my tires downstairs on my bike. Great. Are all you idiots out there thinking the same thing as me or is it just Josh and I? A hundred, no, 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 no. Wait a second. So I think I, I think we can draw a very clear distinction here. All the idiots, including us three, are trying to get everything done on the yep. first go, hands down. But I don't mm-hmm. think everyone is strategizing as extensively as you and Josh are. That seems... So mentally taxing. I don't know yeah. why you do it. Just risk losing a couple of minutes. No, yeah. Who the, cares? The, the strategy comes in. The biggest part for me is order of operations. I need to get that order of operations right in the most efficient way possible. And my favorite, and I've killed a lot of time thinking about this, is in the breakfast routine. Mm-hmm. Between mm-hmm. cereal, milk, bowl, toast, fridge, those kind of things. So mean, I'm dude? thinking, right... I'm like, okay, so my tea's there. I'm going to have to go to the fridge to get the milk, but I'll need the butter. So I should grab the butter at the same time because I'm going to need that oh, very soon. Josh, your and life then, makes me feel anxious. Nah, it, it kills time. <laughs> no, but Josh, well, Josh, Josh, that Josh, no, no, that's the thing, Josh. You know that you do this. I probably do it to a lesser extent, but surely you know that this isn't healthy. There's no Buddhist oh. monks out there that are that are, that are no. calculating their steps and stuff. But you know, you know how I realize it's all pointless is when I go... Oh, I had to do a second trip back to the fridge yeah. to get the butter. Didn't matter. Wasted literally less than two seconds of my life. But, but the other than that, upset. my mind's like tick, 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 tick. Yep. Dion, you have got to see. So a lot of people now, and I can see uh, from the comments that they realize that Josh and I now live together. Yeah. There you go. You Cats have, out of the bag. You have got to see this routine. It is unbelievably <laughs> efficient. So <laughs> Josh starts his job at <laughs> nine o'clock, right? Yeah. Uh, it'll be 8.55 and I'll walk past his room. The door's still closed. I go, how could Josh still be in bed at 8.55? Uh, I don't understand how, but in the space of five minutes, Josh is showered and well-fed with a cup of tea. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's, I don't even think I can get the kettle to boil that quickly. Has he managed and to get another done. sleep in, like a little micro sleep before <laughs> he starts to work? Because oh, I'm just going to yeah, nap the, for 30 seconds. The eight snoozes still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm on, I'm on a six-second snooze cycle now. <laughs> Josh, do you know where all of this comes from? Like, do you know where this 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 quest for efficiency and routine surely, comes from? Surely it's laziness, right? It's got to be laziness. Mm. Absolutely, right? Because I, I actually, I think that the broader point is I want as much of my time to be for me as possible. So mm. anytime I'm doing something that is not purely for pleasure, I want that to be as minor as possible. So any kind of task, be it making breakfast to give energy to my body, or to uh, bring the shopping in, that kind of stuff. I got to make sure that that gets done as quickly and as efficiently as possible so I can spend more time for myself. I'm mm. pretty sure that's the first pop culture reference we've ever had in Welcome to Patchwork. And I'm not even sure what the impression was, Josh. <laughs> no, it <laughs> wasn't. It was, it was somewhere between a robot and Arnold Schwarzenegger. So. Yeah, yeah, that's what it felt like. Um, um, I don't know whether you guys, like in terms of that efficiency thing, 
Mm. I remember um, as a kid, the one thing that I've taken away with me, I think, um, from shopping is watching my mum strategically load the conveyor belt at the grocery store with things that would be packed in the same bag that correspond with the room that they'll be unloaded in. Yeah. Oh, I do it like that's so that's what that's what the the checkout people are doing, but I do it by uh, the weight. So I have the weightiest things at the front because they're going to go at the bottom of the bag. The like that, that, that's the weightiest <laughs> things. Um don't want to wait is too long. Um but yeah, so but Christian, you're doing it by or your mum is doing it by where they go. I don't know why you th- think that the that the checkout people are doing that for no, you they they're are. not organizing your house no. for you no yeah, no no are. seriously when i used to do it i would you look down the belt and you see what's coming up and you're like, yeah i should grab that and you go sorry can you just pass me that can you pass me that because you got to pack the bags right and the Looking thing that a lot of people the, the lot of things that people don't do right <laughs> they think every they think every single bag needs a heavy and a light component not every bag needs a heavy and a light component some bags should be purely heavy some bags should purely be light Okay. No, that, oh, that, 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 no, that's not true. Back, oh, oh, well, actually, it's more true now. But back in the day when we used to have plastic, we used to have plastic bags. You're afraid of them ripping, right? That was the big problem. People were idiots, mate. They were tough. They were bloody tough. Nah, no, they actually, weren't tough. Now that now that we're talking about the bags, I want to know what is your guys' favorite uh, green bags? What style? I I like the classic, the square. But I think I I've broadened out to like the bigger ones. I really do like quite a big one. I'll tell you which I love. It's the ones that are somewhat insulated. It's like carrying Whoa. an esky around with you. Yeah, Gosh, they're amazing. Right? They're amazing. What they don't do anything. They, Josh, they're made of a material that professes to keep things cool. <laughs> Whether it does that or not, I don't okay. care. Christian, it's, how it's long? about the optics, Josh. Yeah. How much of a, of a trek are you doing, a four-hour hike between the supermarket and back to your fridge? Oh, Josh... No, it's, not about, it, it's not it's about. It's not about the trek that. From the free, it's not. Thank you, Dion. It's about the fact that if I've gone shopping and I've got that s that bloody esky in my back seat, I can I can go visits. I can <laughs> yeah. go trek around town if I want. Yeah, because the food in there is going to be fine. It it's gives pretty you great. It's pre- it's pretty great. Like it's ensuring it's ensuring freshness. Ultimately, the one thing I don't like about those bags is some of them have those zips, but some of them mm. have that rubbish drawstring, don't they? And aren't those drawstrings just garbage? Because you, you 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 pull them tight and you can't trust that they're sealed. But I trust a zip. Don't you worry about that. I trust the zip. Um, but yeah, don't no, I use trust them. The zip. I use them. I use them. I take them to the markets. They're, they're, they're beautiful things. But Josh, going back to your point, I like a, a like a, what are they, a, like a Hessian bag or a plastic mm. bag, like one of those thick bags. I like it with a, with a nice base, a nice plastic firm base. Do you like the and square plastic base? I think they're great. I mean, they get lost. Who knows where they go? Like yeah. <laughs> some of them lose their integrity so quickly because they just vanish. But yeah, I love a square bag. So Christian, what's, so you're, you're, you're putting everything yeah. in your, in your foil sealant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. The, the the I hate the plastic bases because you'll come back to a bag after a couple of weeks and suddenly that, that base is broken apart. I don't know what happens, but a little piece of plastic snaps off. Then the whole integrity has been, uh, is been uh, what's the word? Wasted. The word. <laughs> Wasted. <laughs> well, to, wrap it, to, to wrap it up, to cut Christian off uh, in his, <laughs> his prime in that sentence, um, it sounds like you guys are in agreement that, you know, we, we, we do focus like a lot and Josh doesn't seem to have a problem with it, but Christian and I seem to have a problem with the fact that we focus way too much on, on efficiency. Maybe next time, you know, I'm going to slow things down. I'm going to channel my inner Buddhist monk and I'm going to slow things down. And I think that really that's the way we should be going. Sure. Uh, earlier last season, we started a little segment that we like to call copycat and it all, and it all started with an impression of Tim, the tool man, Taylor that we did <laughs> from home improvement, we, the TV show. If everyone knows it, nineties, nineties TV show, Tim, the tool man, Taylor. And we thought that it would be good to come back to it every once in a while. And the three of us who are not self-declared impressionists try doing the best impression we can of a different thing. For tonight, we're going to do a chicken clock. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, I think it's best for Josh to start. Great. Oh, you want to start with the best. Thank God. Okay. 
I'm so uh, nervous. I hate it because we don't get to practice. I hate not practicing. I'm so nervous. I'm so All right. nervous. All right, calm down. Here we go. <laughs> what kind of sexy lips does that then have? That's a it great joke. Like- that Sounded Sunday like night about clucking, to, baby. Sound like you're about to break into a sentence there, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I it's gave like a gorillas. little. It's those like gorillas who know sign language. It's a chicken who's learning how to talk. <laughs> jo- Josh, I don't think you saw that, but Dion was practicing just then. Yeah. Dion, oh. you're up next. No, I didn't mean to. Get in there, oh, mate. God, it's so hard not to listen to what Josh did and just emulate it. So that's my excuse for this being shit. I thought also, also, just before I do this, I thought what we were doing was the... <laughs> that there bit. You go. I, didn't, I didn't know we were doing the intro bit. Oh, what, trying to make it trying to make do a, a chicken cluck, mate. Stop talking. Do I didn't a chicken know we were, cluck. I didn't know we were doing the beginning, middle, and end. <laughs> cluck like a chicken. <laughs> Don't tell me to cluck like a chicken. All right, here we go. <laughs> It sounds like someone was drowning that Help chicken me. as as a Help. hit, an assassination attempt on the chicken. Christian. I don't know, Josh. That wasn't too bad you for mine. I for mine, that, was that wasn't shocking. too bad. All right, All right, Christian, your turn. You're up. Good God. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. What's a chicken sound like? <laughs> <laughs> because neither of you have reminded me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is I am stunned. That you guys are always so good at these impressions. Uh, what was that, Christian? I would never. I don't know because it would easily it, be the worst. Easily. I was trying. I was trying to have the chicken oh. look for something because I. <laughs> I thought if the chicken is searching, it will be more natural as opposed to just the classic buck buck. Oh God! Why what? have you got a backstory for your chicken? <laughs> I, oh, because man. I want us to get into character, Josh. Hey, at least we know he didn't practice, or at least we know he's never done that in his life, yeah. or never eaten chicken, or seen a chicken, or cracked <laughs> an egg, or anything. Oh, man. So, as both of you know, and most of the listeners, I absolutely hate socks. <laughs> Especially washing them, because there's so many to take off the line at the end of the of the wash. Yep. So I was hanging up my socks the other day and when I was take I, I tried to hang them up, you know, in a matching pair so that yep. when I take them down, I can roll them and it's more efficient, right? And then I had this, you know, a gust of wind blew past and a, a leaf smashed me on the face and I had a realization. <laughs> I don't understand why socks need to match. Mm. It doesn't make any sense. Mm. If they're hidden under your shoes and pant leg, why why are we so concerned with our socks matching up? Yeah, it's an interesting why. point. There no. you go, Josh. Because you want to have even wear of your socks. If you're if you're Ooh. picking and choosing different socks from all over the shop, you're gonna get different wear and tear on different socks. So this one's gone on the heel, that one's not, because I wore that six times last week and I wore this one once. So over time, your 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 legs will be out of whack. Yeah, but <laughs> if you are if you are treating all socks as even and none belong to a pair, Sounds then like your surely... political platform. Yeah, <laughs> I want to see a world where all socks are treated equal. <laughs> No, but it's the true. Like, suck. I, the best sucks. A pairs of sucks. I get one percent of the one percent of sucks with holes. <laughs> we live I, in a country where no suck should have a hole in it. We're a very rich country. There's no reason for sucks to have holes in them. <laughs> I get what Josh is saying, though. Josh is saying you got a big, you know, a big pool of socks. If you're just going in and diving and grabbing and putting them on. Surely they'll have even wear. But Christian, are you also suggesting that, you know, why, why are we wearing two, two of the same pairs of shoes, huh? Why are we doing well, that? Just wear different pairs of shoes. And don't worry about left and right. Just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, because the pa- because shoes people can see. And I can understand the idea of wanting to look coordinated. Mm. But, answer, like, if we, if we had two heads, for example, are you going to say that the two heads have to wear the same coloured hat? <laughs> oh, wow. 
That is, do we want to go down that rabbit hole? That shocking rabbit hole? <laughs> Surely both heads, who are distinct people, mm. get to wear different hats. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, but, but they're so, not. Christian, your, your socks you're talking about, are you talking about every pair of sock you own? Or you're like, oh, I bought a 10 pack of black socks. They're all purely black. I can mix and match. Or you're talking well, like, I'll wear a black one there. I'll wear a sports one there. I'll wear a dress sock. Like, I'm, I'm still wearing socks as pairs, Josh. I'm, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't relinquished that, con- like that, that force yet. I think I think the biggest thing though is the the style of sock, right? Uh, sure, mm-hmm. colors you can probably get away with. I think stylistically you need the same sock. So if you've got like a big thick um, winter yes. sock, a big woolly one, you've got to mm-hmm. wear that with another big thick woolly one. If you've got a, a thin yeah. little dress one, you've got to wear it with a thin dress one. Josh, what's your favorite type of sock? I can't believe this is something we haven't canvassed. What's your favorite? Probably just a sports sock. A great. Well, we- I hate I hate ankle socks. They're the worst. Really? Because they slip down. No, they they just just give me a give me something covering my ankles. I'm a very modest <laughs> man. <laughs> Christian, what's your favorite sock? What do you what do you what do you wear? Love, you can have a sock love, on a desert island. I love a colorful <laughs> business sock. It's oh, got... so you like wait? So you like a colorful business sock? But you're saying why do we not wear ev- even socks? Because no one's seeing them. Why are you wearing colorful socks? What's the point? Uh, it's for me, Dion. Oh, and, and I'm not, and I'm not saying that I have to wear the same colourful business sock on each leg. That's what I'm saying, right? But how much consideration are both of you paying to to the coordination of what you wear in the morning? So when uh, you get up yeah. and you're thinking about the day ahead and what you're going to be wearing, how much time are you spending going? Now this matches this, and that well, goes with that at Suzanne. It's a, it's a great it's a great question, but I find that either I've got a knack for coordinating my clothes, or most of my clothes work well together. And I don't know what that is. I don't know if I t- if I, I go for a certain palette when I when I shop, but th- I, I feel like I just coordinate automatically. You know what it probably is? It's because you don't take fashion risks. Mm. Yeah, there yeah, that you're, could be you're true. Not, you're not doing any fat. I'm not doing any fashion risks. I'm not going out there because then it's like, oh, that that shirt or that thing only works in one specific situation. Otherwise, most of my stuff's fairly generic. I can get away with most things going together pretty well. Yeah. That's the thing. When I think of both of you, I think I can. Vi- if I close my eyes and visualize both of you, you're both wearing a t-shirt. But Dion, you're wearing a t-shirt with like a a, a little colored pocket. Um, and then yeah right and yep and then both of you are wearing light denim jeans right. and some kind of sports shoe oh yeah. really i mean christian i mean for those you know who tune into the youtube live stream you're dressed like a policeman and you know that's the way <laughs> i think about you now um <laughs> so I my, you- mike can i quickly give you my mm. version of dion my see my version of dion is quite different well not so quite different but for me dion is a um short sleeve shirt um mm-hmm. some shorts and some sandals that's oh. classic Dion to me. Short yeah. sleeve shirt, shorts yeah. and sandals. Mate, yeah. Dion, it's not, it's, time, no, time to Christian. change it up, buddy. Nah, <laughs> come on. It's Josh isn't talking about a short sleeve business shirt that businesses wore, businessmen wore in the 90s. He's talking about fitted, really hot, yeah. sexy kind yeah, of. Yeah, that's what Josh, I'm Josh about. knows what's up. Yeah. <laughs> and when I yeah. and when I and when I think about Josh, I think about him wearing like a, a feature, a feature shirt, something that he's going to be asked about. Something to do with gaming or or something or a festival or something. So it's a feature t shirt or 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 the alternative is the checked. Josh loves a long oh, sleeve yeah. check. Gets him off. And also <laughs> skinny, skinny jeans that are about 15 years old that he wears out until they fall off his fucking legs. <laughs> right, that's, yeah, I think that's that that is a classic Josh. It's the idea of something being worn just a little bit, a little bit longer than it should. Can I tell you about can I tell you about one thing though? I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I have a dark green. Have I talked about my dark green pair of pants before? Surely I have. I haven't? All right, well, these dark green pants do not go with anything aside from a white T-shirt or a white shirt. They are unbelievable. They right. clash with everything. I absolutely love them, but they clash with everything. Do you guys own anything that is green or do, like, or do you own a pair I of got, Ben Sherman pants that are green? <laughs> I got a, when I was in Europe and excited to be in Europe, I got a pair of uh, mustard short shorts. Very, And I was like, Summer, I'm going to come back and be like, I'm going to yep. be the guy who wears very short shorts. They didn't have them in my size. So they ve- they were very big. I was like, oh, just get them, mate. Just get them. So they were way too big for me. Had to wear a belt really tight around them. And then they only went with like 
a, a maroon top or a, or a white top, and that was about it. And everything else kind of looks crap with the mustard. Yeah, yeah I, I feel with mustard, you got to be really careful because of the way, like, you got to be mindful of your complexion, right? Mm. Like, you don't want to be a mustard color in skin <laughs> and then wear mustard. People don't know where the skin ends and the short and they'll, start, they'll start putting you on hot dogs. They'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> hot dogs, you mean the hot dogs are legs? <laughs> All right, right. so what are we going to do, Josh? We're going to come back in a few minutes. Is that right? Yes, going to take a quick little break. Uh, Really goods, guys. Get your really goods in the chat. Uh, We'll be picking some for the show. Uh, We take a quick little break. Get your really goods in. Uh, We're back in a couple of minutes.
McDonald's is great. Really, really good. You know what's really, really good? Really, really good. You know what's really, really good? Yes, and we, we love hearing your really goods, guys. So thanks for sending them through in the break. And to kick us off first, you know what Richard Jolly thinks is really good? When it's raining heavily and you have to go somewhere and it stops just before you step out. Really, really good, good, really good, really good. Really good. Really good. And you know what Jules Weaver thinks is really good? When you walk away from your food heating up in the microwave and return within one second of the timer. Really good. Really good. Really good, Jules. And you know what Jessica Mitchell thinks is really good? When leftovers fit in the Tupperware perfectly. Oh, really, really good. Really good, really good, really good Jessica. Really good. 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 Oh, thank you so much for listening to the real, the first at home with Patchwork, Patch64. Thanks so much for the people who join us on YouTube Live. Of course, you can uh, find us every second Thursday. Uh, just go to our YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash welcome to Patchwork. Uh, this has been very, very fun. Remember to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all three, or you're not a real fan. Uh, and also we have Patreon, and we have so many Patreons that have, that have um, subscribed to us in the last couple of weeks. It's so damn cool. Uh, you are the wing be- beneath our wings. Um, so, yes, go to... Um, they, are, they are the wings beneath our wings. <laughs> they're the, second, they're the bowl of proverbial wings. <laughs> it's the second barrel wings. So thank you so much for the second barrel wings, Patrons. Um, yeah, we love you. We we do this all for free. And, and Patrons is the way that we can su- sort of sustain this. So if you go to patreon.com forward slash welcome to Patchwork, um, do it now. It's a lovely thing to do. Um, but as we do every week, we sew a new patch into our quilt of friendship. Uh, Josh, what patch did you sew into our quilt this week? Thank you, Dion. My patch this week was Christian putting the seatbelt around his shopping as he tucks it into the baby seat. <laughs> <laughs> and Christian, uh, what patch did you sew this week? Thank you, Josh. This week, I sewed into my patch a very inquisitive chicken searching for a T-shirt to match its green pants. <laughs> And Dion, what did you sew into your patch this week? (laughs) My patch this week is Christian going to the local market with his insulated bag, which opens not by a zip or a drawstring, but with a can opener. (laughs) 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 Thank you for listening to Welcome to Patchwork. As you'd know already, we're YouTube streaming these on Thursday nights at 8pm, so join us then. I've been Dion. I've been Josh. And I've been Christian. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.